Who are you playing against? Who are you playing against up here? Not right in front of you, necessarily. Eventually, those two things will match up. But who are you playing against? Who are you playing against? Is it still, well, I'm preparing for this team coming up and they got this guy and they got this guy and they got this guy. Is that dominating the way that you are constructing your practice? Or is it, how am I working on myself within what I can accomplish? What am I doing to combat what they are bringing at me this time? And that part of it is where the long-term developmental mindset comes in. Because it's not just what do I need to do right now to get better at shooting. You start to, when you think about it that way, say and not put the cart before the horse. When you start to think about it that way, it goes from, I want to be a better shooter, to how am I going to be a better shooter on a better team? Who are you playing against? Who are you preparing for? But also, who are you preparing to be with? So now, the long-term marathon mindset starts bringing teammates into it starts bringing all of the other factors into what you are going for and the type of player you're going to become within the team. How, where is, what is your fit within a team? What kind of multi-tool is your practice and your talents, what is that going to develop? What are you going to be capable of out there? What are you going for in the long term? Because it's always going to be helpful to have a three-point shot. It's always helpful to have a mid-range shot. It's always helpful to be able to knock down all of your post maneuvers. It's always helpful to be able to do all of this stuff. But that's where identifying your play style and how you like to play and your natural advantages marry with the feeling of how you do stuff like you are going to develop your play style over time but not every aspect of your play style is going to automatically be useful so you have to when you're really going for like upper levels of competition, you have to be able to marry the two together, the feel and the fit along with the situation that you're looking for is going to determine just so much, obviously so, 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 so much. If you're not honest with yourself about your play style and like how you fit into a team and being uh, flexible with what you are willing to do, the job and the role that you are filling, there's going to be a lot of unnecessary friction. So just being considerate of that while you are looking for what you how you want to play rather just keeping that in the back of your mind is really 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 important because that is that is where your passion obviously resides eventually that is going to be the fuel for your passion and energy moving forward obviously but it is always going to be the source of your friction as well 
of like what you are capable of and what you have practiced and what the team is asking of you is going to be the source of your friction. So considering that and being considerate of that and practicing the stuff that you're really, really weak at and being serviceable at as many different things as possible is going to be very, very useful. I don't say compromise your play style, but being considerate and flexible is really what makes your play style ultimately as successful as it's going to be. I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you are not considerate of how your play style affects the rest of the people that you're playing with, not just your opponents and how it affects them negatively, not just what you are doing to other people, but what you are doing to the people that you weren't intending to do it to. Because <laughs> I think that might have as much if not more of an impact on someone in one way or the other unintentionally than anything that you intended to do could ever match. Like, the unintentional is going to outweigh the intentional over time. Being aware and considerate of that is going to be useful. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Even if you don't want to compromise and this is the way that you do it and this is how you have fun and that's just what it is, no one else pays your sub or whatever you want to say to them, sure. But that's... It's just... You're not going to get quite as far as you think. I'll say that right now. And having said that, then we're considerate of everything that we know, that we think we know, that we could even be aware of. We try to be considerate of all the things that we don't know. But that is what it is as well. It's not always going to work out to the best case scenario. It happens. But the intentions are there. We want to work hard. We want to be on a really good team. And we have practice hard to fit and flex into the best team that we can find. How do we take that to the next level? How do we practice as hard, if not harder, than other people? Because... I woke up at five, but someone else out there, they woke up at four. Well, guess what? You know what that guy's thinking about? The dude that woke up at three. You know what that dude is worried about? The dude that woke up at three? He's worried about the dude that never went to sleep. And you know what I'm worried about? How healthy those people are treating themselves. <laughs> are they getting enough sleep? There is a point of diminishing return. That's where the balance comes into place. So how much you practice is not nearly as important to me as the quality of practice. Quantity does not compare if the quality is not there. Put that on a shirt. If you're practicing for 12 hours a day and it's all the wrong shit and you're just beating yourself up, getting the wrong feeling, teaching yourself how to get out of time, all of that, that part is obvious. You want quality practice. How do you take it to the next level? First things first, we've talked about being on time. Not super fast, not too slow. On time. What is on time? We have identified. Okay, what does on time feel like? So now we feel it. We feel that consistency. And we've dialed in before. 
We've dialed in once or twice. We know what it feels like to be dialed. We have achieved a sense of dialed. But that's not good enough because that's what other people are doing. And just what other people are doing, that ain't good enough, right? Obviously, we want to go to the next level. We are ascending now. What are we going to do to gain an advantage? How do we do more? And it's by doing more, by going to extremes, not injuring yourself, obviously, but pushing yourself to constructive limits. That allows you to change the way that you do things, the way that you order things in your mind. It identifies how important things are. Each individual step, you get a different perspective by extreme analysis. So what do I mean by that? <clears throat> okay, so in game, you have a minute flat you gotta do this thing in a minute all right so now you practice that thing in intervals of one minute that is important you think well you want to go faster than that. you have to feel what one minute feels like do you know do you know what one minute feels like how long does one minute feel well if you're just sitting around Fucking flipping this fucking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, what are you doing? Well, a minute feels like fucking century. Okay, but then I fucking grab my mouse and my keyboard and I'm fucking locked in. What does a minute feel like? Shit. What do you mean three and a half minutes went by? All I did was this. Yeah. Do you know what one minute feels like? When one minute feels really fast and when one minute feels really slow. Why? Are you on time? Does it feel like you're on time? Or does it feel like everything is just happening just a little too fast? That is something to recognize. So when we take things to an extreme, I don't want to just think about how do I do it in 45 seconds? I want to consider how do I do it two times in a minute? Not only do I want to be faster than other people, I want to go through the process so fucking quickly that it forces me to recognize at the most basic level every single action what is necessary down to literally every single step that you take and i would do that this is how i started doing that was when i started working in kitchens because that's what it was for me was immersion therapy that's why I started doing it, because it was just the most extreme immersion therapy I could have ever asked for, for everything that I struggle with. It was this, this feeling of not just understanding I don't have a good relative sense of how long each minute is taking. Like a good understanding in is I want to be better at this. This is something that I need to be better at. This is something that I was forced to recognize that I'm not good at this, that I don't operate well in minutes and seconds, that everything that I did in construction with audiovisual, everything was so planned and thought out fuck measure twice i'm measuring three or four times and cutting once twice that's not good enough sometimes like there's i need to know and i'm going to take the time 
to understand what it takes to figure this out. Full stop. And obviously, you know, there's still deadlines that we're working with, but that's not like the situation I'm talking about. These are individual situations where I'm going to figure this out, and it's not a case of minutes or seconds. It was always a case of days and weeks to months to years almost in certain cases. And I was naturally very good at that because of all the stuff that's going on. That part fit right in for me. It was a very, very natural feeling for me. But that, that was not helping me grow anymore. That was not challenging me. That wasn't a part of a process that I felt a need to get better at. So then I flipped the entire script. And as soon as I got into working in kitchens, I knew it was going to be hard because that's what I was looking for. That's how I challenged myself. And it makes you pay attention to the way that you do every single little thing. Every ticket is a ticking fucking time bomb that doesn't stop. Seconds are always the same fucking duration when you're staring at that clock. And when shit is going down, it never feels slower. You only get to fucking faster, 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 faster. You have to go faster. And then when you always have to go faster, when it comes down to it, the true mastery in my mind of working that station is you know how long it takes minimum to get it done. And that is how long it takes every time. And it's the, it is the best version of whatever that is that is how that is what it takes that is how long it takes to do it and you just you take how long it takes you to do it and you boil it all the way down until you hit that fucking limitation of this is literally physically how long i am required to do this to make sure it is in the right state to be served and all of this extra when you are working a whole station and you have a fucking hundred ingredients just railed throughout it and the whole fucking you got the whole grill fill like just full no space in between anything every single thing that you do every single thing that you do is so fucking important i'm not joking when i say literally like Making sure that you have the right utensil in whatever pan it is to make sure that you get it out right, the right amount immediately, first time, you grab it right, you flip it at the right thing, in the right spot, the right amount, and you put it back exactly. That has to hit. Every time you do it, you don't get to fucking scraping out the sign and you fucking... Make sure it's done drippings. You don't want to make a mess. And you fucking hold on. Oh, shit. The fucking light's back here. I gotta grab that. You reach around, but you don't want to drip, so you're still holding on to it. You fucking. Oh, that plate's hot. Hold on. Fucking grab my towel. Let my towel go. I'm gonna just use, I'll use this dirty one, and then you fucking grab it. And you're like, oh, it's still hot. It's still hot. It's still hot. The towel was wet. That towel, shitty towel was wet. Fuck. I've burned myself. All right, and then I'm gonna fucking grab. Shit, I gotta get more again because I fucking accidentally dumped a bunch of it out. Right in the middle of shit. Right, and then sticking to the fucking scoop because the scoop is shitty. So I gotta fucking be sure that it comes out of the fucking scoop, right? And then okay, and then I fucking whizzed it around onto the side. And fucking touch that back up, and put it back in, and then I made a mess, and fucking now I don't know where my towel is again. So then I got back to, all right. Now, where is the side for this dish? I have literally seen people do that while they have a row of tickets. I'm like, I'm not joking. I've seen people that have several things, not like, oh, we got shit down. Shit's burning. We're going like burning, like well, burning, like ruined, burning. And they're sitting there fucking. Scraping the fucking. 
working to fucking flip the scoop seven times because they can't get it out because it's not the right consistency because they didn't prepare that fucking ingredient properly. Like, you can't do that. You can't do that. So when you practice, when you're practicing, what, in my mind, the difference between 45 seconds and doing it twice in a minute it's not just this is how I do it and now I'm going to go faster. This is the challenge. I have to do this twice in, to, in, in the normal amount of time. I have to do it twice. What does that look like? Because you're going to do it differently than you would normally. I'm talking about full sprint, full extension, grabbing things. First try, you have to grab it or correctly the first try. So how does it need to be set up? How far away can it possibly be? Are you all, what is it allowing room for other things? Where is it always set? That's the other, that's what, that's what that teaches you in the kitchen is to refer to as mise en place. Everything is in its place. When everything, that's how you organize your mindset. That's how you bring everything together and you say, okay, this has to be like this because of this and this has to be like this because of this and this has to be like this because of this and this and this and this make it real point out and define why things are the way that they are and really cut the fucking fat there's extra steps in there there's so many fucking extra steps in there and it might come down to, holy shit, why would I, why was I ever doing it that way in the first place? I, I hope it does, because that's real fucking progress right there. You think, holy shit, I was probably doing that in the worst fucking way I could have ever tried to do it. Like, oh my god, what the fuck was I doing this whole time? Why was I doing that? Like, oh, holy shit, I literally, I'll never forget I can still remember it to this day. It was the most recent example of just full blown. What the fuck was I doing? And it was my fucking homie Luis. He cussed my hair. Big shout out. Great guy. I worked with him in restaurants. And there was, when I was a baker, I would help with stuff just all over the building. I held positions in almost every single job in that building. Every type of job. <clears throat> and so one of the things that I did was help with processing all of the fish that we smoked ourselves. It's an old Jewish style deli and bakery. So we smoked our own fish and it was a whole process. Very 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 involved and i wanted to be a part of it just however i could and that was one of the roles i had well it ended up being the only role that i really had in the time that i was there it didn't progress on anything else was once the fish had been had been marinating in everything that it's in is you know all sorts of shit juices it was like orange red onion, capers, all sorts of spices and juices, bunch of stuff, lemon. No, not lemon, just orange. So all of that slammed together, wrapped up in plastic. Long story short, the way that I was going about getting the fish out of the plastic, one day I just asked Luis, I was like, hey, man, because he was the one other guy that did it at the time. I was like, how do you do this? And how, like, how do you do it, like, twice as fast as me? And he was like, it took him. So my process, I'll lay it out how fucking ridiculous and stupid and how much of a time waster it was. I could tell how all of the plastic was folded up. So I'm grab the fish flip it over start fucking undressing the plastic like it's fucking christmas present and i don't want to mess up the wrapping paper and oh my god i'm so excited i'm just peeling the plastic apart i'm just like you know i'm pretty clever with the whole like 
you know, I want to scrape everything as it comes off, so I'm pulling the fish away. So I'm not totally fucking this up. I'm not just fucking off. And he comes in. I'm like, hey, man, how do you do this? How do you? I just want to see what it looks like when you do it. Like, no problem. Literally grabs the fish, whacks it down, rips the plastic, swipes all of it as he's ripping, just pulls it out. Boom. Like, I... That I... Obviously, I've been plenty embarrassed in my life for good reasons and not good reasons. Sure. That is one of the most fucking embarrassing things I have ever seen in my life was realizing I'm fucking treating this fucking dead fish. I appreciate the fish a ton. I really surely do. I'm treating this fish like the fucking president of whatever country you're from. Like... It's dead. I don't think it's going to get offended by how I take it out of the plastic. I'm <laughs> like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm just like, oh, you have to be fucking kidding me. Like, it's everything that you do. There is a better way to do everything that you do. That is the essence of this video. There's always a better way to do it. And then just figure it out. But it's how you want to do it it's what makes sense to you it's why you do it makes that process different so you have to figure it out you might see a way that someone else doing says that's exactly what i'm going for fucking awesome and then boom you got it you nailed it and you understand why they did it that way because you know why you want it done that way that's what's important you can't just see and say oh that's what works so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. That's not okay. That's not good. That you are doing more harm than good at that point. You are putting blind faith into other people for no reason. And you are also not working out your own ability to critically think, especially when it's a new environment, a new arena that you are learning about for the first time. You have to make sure that that information is going in in the right order. That You're cataloging things intentionally and properly. That's a huge thing for me that I know to be true is I have to make sure that I am learning things in the right order, especially, you know, all the special stuff I got going on. Because I have seen it happen time, not time and again, because I do everything that I can to allow it to not happen. But when it does happen, I see it for what it is immediately now. And as I fucking misremembered this specific thing really early on, and now I just trip over that specific thing every time I run across it. And then I got to really fucking, I got to fucking go all the way in there and rip it out. And it becomes twice as hard if I don't plan it properly the first time. So I don't give it a, the chance the right chance i that's it's so important to make sure that you are very intentional about what you are accepting and the way that you are accepting it and how it fits into the big picture because if it's just i just run up this single route and it, this is the way that i know that it is played you're missing out on a whole lot in a whole lot of different ways and that is a shame and that's like just going at it, that fucking ripping the fucking plastic away and just ripping the fucking fish out and just whoop, and being done with it and getting it to the next stage, doing that as fast as possible. That's what I was alluding to with the full contact knitting. That is that is really the full circle right there is. You're going to figure out a different way to knit when someone is fucking affecting the way that you are knitting. <laughs> and, you know, knitting is purposefully, you know, non-equivalent in this situation. But that's think about it. If you're sitting there and you're knitting and you're knitting and then all of a sudden someone comes up and fucking tries to rip it out of your hands. You're going to hold it a little differently. You're going to hold it a little more firmly. You're going to hold it maybe with different fingers even. 
you're going to go about it in a different way. And you're going to be a little more vigilant and aware of your surroundings when you are prepared for someone to come up and and knock that shit out of your hands like they're going for a fucking interception and missed. Like they're trying to take that shit from you. So you think about it differently. Well, if I knew no one was sitting there, then I'm just fucking holding that shit out. I'm just doing whatever, and I'm locked into only this tiny little next thread. But when you got to play a little defense, when someone else is playing a little defense on you, well, now, hold on. So your little more, your peripheral goes from here to here. And then you expand and expand and expand, and then all of a sudden, you can knit. And you understand the feeling of knitting and you're holding it the right way and you're keeping it close. Might even tuck a little. Put a little fucking make sure you don't fumble. You tuck that bad boy in. And you're kind of looking over your shoulder a little bit. But this, you've got this part locked in. And now you know you've done the math on the knitting side. You feel that it's being done properly but your attention has expanded so now you know you're doing this the fastest way possible you've got it fucking locked in and when you feel something go wrong that feeling is already indicating that something has gone wrong and that feeling is already helping you identify what has gone wrong so now you're feeling and having done that math as fast as you know this is what the equation is. Whatever this equation is, this is what it is. This is what it looks like. So now when it doesn't look like that, I know why. And it's much more automatic than, oh shit, am I still doing this right? And then you go through and then you got to look at the entire sleeve to figure out if you fucked the cuff up. That's not what you want to be doing when you have to maintain awareness. So this sleeve felt like it came together all the way well, but then you find out that you fucked the, the crease up on the elbow, whatever this actual term is, probably not crease, but it might be. You realize you fucked this up, but you're all the way down here. Okay. So why did that happen? And then you trace it back and you don't take it personally. You realize, all right, this is what went wrong. This is how I fix it. This is what I do to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And the next time you're twice as vigilant and you add that section of the math into the equation and it becomes a part of the entire equation and you go over the whole thing and you just keep adding to what the equation actually looks like. And over time, you're going to realize that you are dividing the whole thing by another equation all of a sudden. Or you're doing something completely different and you realize that those parentheses shouldn't be over there. That it actually includes so much more of this to get it to look like this. So that this doesn't change what this looks like. Right? So then the whole equation starts to come together. But you're not going to get the right equation unless you stress test the equation. You have to do it twice in the same amount of time. You're going to figure out how to do math a lot better when you got to do it as fast as you fucking can. Those equations are going to set themselves in much more concrete into what you are building on top of. Those pillars are going to sink deep when you do it fast and you say, okay, that's what it was. One plus one. Yeah, I bet that pillar is pretty fucking deep in your mind. And if you didn't say two... I don't know. But I would like to think that you said two there. And I would like to think that you got what I'm going for when I say that pillar is deep. Sunk deep. So how deep are you sinking all of your pillars? Because you know what six plus six is, right? What's six plus six plus six? Oh, now we're our has our pillar become more shallow? Or is it just deeper and deeper? I'll do you one better. What's six times six? Where's the pillar at now? How deep are these pillars? How comfortable are you with this information? How fast can you do it? Can you go faster and faster and faster 
and you do it twice in the normal amount of time, okay? And then you refine what that looks like one time. How long does it actually take? You have a minute. Do you need that minute? Can you use all of that minute? Is there a way to do things better if you have to use that entire minute? Because there's always another direction to build out from there. So now you're working within, you can do it two times in one minute. You know what that looks like. So what does three times in a minute look like? Is that even possible? Four times, five times? Keep pushing it until you are forced to recognize that is not happening. That happens. Sometimes it happens. It just so happens that it ain't happening. And that's what you want to find out. That is the limitations of your equation. You push it to the fucking limit. You make sure that you have ironed out all the details and that you are doing it right each step. Don't practice all of the wrong shit as fast as you can and say, God damn, I'm so fast. That was awesome. Oh my God. Well, I mean, you still haven't done it right the first time. So as far as I'm concerned, your time is still going. You're still on the clock. That's how poorly you are doing because you haven't done it right once for the first time. So your time is still going. You haven't stopped the clock yet. It is way out of hand. You are fucking up straight up. You have been fucking up. Start over. Fresh clock. New mindset. All of that. Recognize it as incorrect and not useful. What it is for what it is. If it is useful, keep those nuggets. Identify all of that stuff. But if you are fucking up all of your practice... What is it going to look like in the game, right? So we make sure all of our practice is right. I mean, it's the same with so many different things that require all of this precision. You think about like the way that the military practices, the way that piano players practice, the way that professional athletes practice. They don't practice the wrong shit. There are so many people involved in making sure that they are practicing the right things for the right reason, the right way, that is literally most of sports organizations are people filled with making sure that we're doing the right thing for the right reasons. As far as winning games goes, I'll say the right things for the right reasons. That's a, uh, that's a tough, loose concept. That is a interesting term that, uh, Deserves its own video. But. Just think about it in the ways that they go about it right there. Think about the way that everyone in the military deconstructs and reconstructs their gun. Why do you think they're doing that? Why do you think they do it as fast as they fucking possibly can every single time? Why do you think that they make sure that they have to do it right every single time. Otherwise, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if it's not right. It's the same thing with playing a piano. The, one of the number one things a good teacher will teach you, especially to do with a piano, is don't practice the wrong keys just for the sake of speed. You play it, as fast as you can play it, but you play it right. And then over time, once you've practiced smaller sections and you eat it up bite sized chunks and you have the muscle memory built up, then you bring it all together. But you practice small chunks correctly. Small chunks correctly. Small details evaluated correctly. And they all add up. Each individual key does not make its own song, but each key played correctly combines to make a song. And a song is what's worth playing. Every player on a basketball team needs to understand their role, and not one player 
can fill every role on a basketball team. But when each player plays their note, they all play a beautiful song together. That's each key has to do its own job and fill its own role. It doesn't get to be all of these other notes. It has identified that it is this key. And every time it's pressed on time, and it is within the framework of what the entire piano, the entire team has worked on, every time it's pressed on time, it's going to sound good, right? Just like every time you rebuild your gun, if you don't fucking put all of the pins back together, the bullet isn't going to fire. Just like every person in a platoon, if they don't fill out their whole job, the rest of the platoon is going to suffer. That's why everyone has their own role. That's why some people are in charge of ammunition, and some people are in charge of food, and some people are in charge of medical, and some people are in charge of rebounding, and some are in charge of distribution, and some people are just shooters, and some people just want to make sure that everyone is okay and some people just want to make sure everyone knows what they need to know and some people just want to make sure that the right key is being played at the right time i would like to think that that makes sense you have to practice on becoming the right person for the right team. That is it. That's how you find where you're supposed to be. That's how you figure out where you're supposed to be. Whatever it is, that's fine. Doesn't matter. You know, you spend your time doing whatever you want to do. That's fine. I would like to hope and think that it doesn't negatively impact other people, and that's what you get enjoyment from. But unfortunately, there are some people that operate that way. you got to protect yourself from those people. People aren't going to be good teammates, and they're going to show you that they don't intend to be good teammates either. And that's why you are going to show people that you intend to always be a good teammate. And you're going to show them that by practicing how you play. You're going to show them that you are intending to always be a good person by practicing always being a good person. You're not always just going to be a good person. Whatever that means to you, that's not just always going to happen. But so much of practice and so much of being a good person. A good person, someone that is effective and comfortable with who they are and loves who they are and wants to help other people figure that out as well. That's my personal opinion and definition of it. Someone that is that way is going to constantly be evaluating why they're doing what they're doing and why they are doing it. If you're not constantly evaluating how proactive you are, and how you practice, you aren't going to be able to show anyone that that is what you do. And if you're not showing anyone, no one has any reason to believe you. And if no one believes you, that says a lot. And it says way more about you than it does about them. If you really, really break it down, and you ditch that ego, it says so much more about you than what anyone else sees. A reflection of your intentions. That is what other people see. Show them. Show them. Full stop. Bottom line. Show them. That's what it is. Can't wait to find out. Can't, I know, personally, I can't wait to see it. Let's see what you got. I think a lot of people are. I think way more people than you think are 
ready to fucking see it. Do your thing. Keep on chasing your dreams. Keep becoming who you were meant to be. Whatever that looks like. Become yourself. That is what is important. Anything else? I don't know, man. I don't have any opinion on that. That's for other people. I'm fucking busy, man. I'm fucking busy. Got shit to do. Got practice to go accomplish. Got a lot to do. I got a lot to show people. So I'm going to keep doing it. Hope you do too. Can't wait. And as always, you know, you gotta be safe. You gotta stay dangerous. You gotta take it easy. You need the balance. Practice isn't always just go, 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 go. You gotta recover. When you overextend on purpose, when you exhaust yourself on purpose to reach and find and push these limits, you have to be good to yourself. You have to recover properly. Otherwise, the longevity won't be there. The passion will run dry. You'll lose confidence. And you won't know why you're doing it anymore. And it's, it's going to rob you of a part of who you are. You can't allow that to happen. That's something that is entirely within your power to prevent. As long as you know why you're doing it. But you have to be good to yourself. You got to take it easy. All that elbow grease doesn't just come from nowhere. You got to build it back up. You got to build it back up. Once that can runs dry, you got to give yourself some time. Appreciate how far you have come. And then get ready to gear back up and get going again. Time to saddle up, baby. Let's see it. Thank you for being who you are supposed to be. Thank you.